Welcome to the Gate 7 International Podcast. What's happening, everybody? This is Adi Gate 7 International. We are super excited to be here today. Rolling solo after the game against Adis. Quite a bit to talk about today, including some very interesting remarks by our new vice president and representative to the Super League Council, Alexis Cuyas. But before we get forward with all of that, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Join us on our Patreon channel as well. All of the engagements that you give us help us continue to grow this channel, and it continues to grow the red and white community. A lot of us out there, if we believe the metrics that social media is telling us, we have an expected audience that should be anywhere between 200 to 600,000 people. Craziness. Craziness. But, hey. I wouldn't have believed that a month ago until I saw how far that the show has been reaching and I saw how far our social media has been reaching. And we have now reached two months in a row just on Instagram, over 160,000 accounts just on Instagram, this small little project. So we're really proud of that. And we are super thankful for you guys for helping us because without you guys, this whole thing wouldn't exist. So it's fantastic news for all of us and we're super excited um to be able to to say that we did it it's uh i'm honestly speechless just talking about it but anyway moving forward we talked about patreon visit us on patreon.com slash gate seven international for a dollar a month you can join the whatsapp chat we share information there that we're not normally going to share or we can't share publicly for various reasons so it's fun it's chaotic check it out and you know the support goes a long way into helping us make the content on the show even better a couple of quick announcements before we we get to the coverage for what what's been going on uh the scouting reports for both of the new midfielders we brought in andre horta and chiquinho are available both of the scouting reports are available you can get early access to those scouting reports as well if you are uh, an expanded content to your patrons so we always release the scouting reports when the player is has been announced by the club. But I get usually we get some information that they're coming beforehand. So we get the scouting report done so that when the player is announced, you can get some information available. But if you are a patron, as soon as I finish it up, you're able to see it. So check it out. And a quick apology for the Andre Horta deep dive. Um, there were some technical difficulties that I did not catch. Uh, I had very high latency, it looked like, when I was recording. And so there was some very distorted noise. And it, it made the whole thing just unlistenable. So I, I do apologize for that. But it was re-recorded. It's up there now. It's clean. Listen to it. Thank you to everybody that brought it to our attention immediately so that we could address the issues. But hope you guys find them valuable and informative when you're trying to learn about some of these players that are that are coming in. One announcement also before we get to uh, the coverage for this week, it's the merch announcement. So this has been delayed. Uh, we know that it was initially supposed to be launched just after Christmas. We had a couple of issues with one of the online platforms that we're using that we had to give uh, some extra information for and do a lot of troubleshooting to get working. But it is working. Uh, every It looks fun. There's more stuff that'll be added as we continue this year, but it's a great start. I hope you guys are as excited as we are for it. Uh, I'm going to be doing testing with the sales tomorrow to make sure the platform's running fine. And then you guys will be able to, to purchase merch, Gate 7 merch, Gate 7 International merch, I should say. We're really excited about it, and we hope you guys like it as well. Now, without further ado, we're going to get into the match, Adis versus Libyakos. Uh, Olympiacos wins two to one. 
Adis didn't really show much most of the match until the very end. Uh, Ten minutes after a, a couple of very peculiar subs by um, uh, Carlos Carvajal. And before we kind of get onto the match, I wanted to touch on some statements by our vice president, Gullas. Uh, uh, I didn't watch all of them. I, I can only handle listening to this guy for so long. I don't know how you guys are, but there i i know why i know why he's at the club i get it but uh, it's uh, the guy's something else and the the statements that he made today he talked about the fact that we want a greek core or they want greek spoken in the locker room there's no more loans and it's it, it's one of those things that is interesting to me because I, I aside from Alexa Dropoulos, I haven't really seen us bringing more Greeks in or promoting the Greeks that we have. Also, most of the Greeks that are starters in the lineup are out of contract. So make of that what you will. I mean, I, I do believe that they, that they, maybe that's a goal. Um, but, um, uh, you know, we'll see, um, we'll see how that, that, that goes moving forward. But you know he they 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 really also threw uh, Cordon under the bus. Uh, he threw Cordon under the bus. Um, they mentioned that uh, Marinaki doesn't need a technical director to to determine the uh, the direction of of the club. And it's there, there's so many troubling things about the statement about this statement to unpack here. And I'll start with the fact first is I. I'm, I'm happy that they say they want to build a Greek core because I do believe we need one. I do believe that if you do not have a Greek core, I think that maybe it helps, it helps more in the, in the derbies. And if you don't have a Greek core in the derbies, there's, you know, you have to have somebody that's got skin in the game and you don't get that without actually having Greeks in there. Now, am I saying we have to bring in or promote any random Greek that's in our academy or bring, no, we have to bring quality. But Kosas Lianos has talked about in this, in in this club in Libyakos, there's no reason we shouldn't try to emulate what Bayern Munich does in Germany, in Greece. We can get the best Greeks and and bring them in. I mean, there's no reason you can't tell me that some of these Greeks that are available or some of these players in the Greek Super League can't can't be worse than some of what we've seen already or some of what we've had that haven't even produced for us on the team. So while I appreciate the words from Kuyas, I I have to tell you guys, I'm not. I'm not feeling, I'm not really feeling it from the club that this is really the vision that they want. And I know in the past they've always talked about it's always important to have a Greek club or a Greek core, but I have to see this to believe it. And 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 Guyas is just he can be as good of a lawyer as he wants. It's I, I don't know, but that's the first part. So the second part about the more the the Marinakis not needing a technical director or a sporting director to determine to determine the direction of the club. I also find that problematic. Not not that I'm saying that the the larger cousin or the larger goals, larger overall arching goals of the club maybe shouldn't be directed by the owner. Okay, I get it. You know, technically the owner is the one that should have a big picture, but you need to let your sporting directors do their jobs as an owner. Look, look at sports in, in, in every country, right? Look, look at sports in the United States. The, the, in the United States, the owners that get more heavily involved personally, those, those are the clubs that tend to not do as well. The ones that micromanage the most, they don't know the sport as well as the people that are actually in the sport. So from look, the way I see it is if you're an owner, you're the bank. You're the bank. Sure, you're big picture. You set the goals. You set this, but that's it. <laughs> Unless things are going tits up, you should not be involved in the day-to-day. -day. Let the sporting director do his job. You let the general director do their job. You let the football people that you put in place do their job. And quite frankly, you know, Vagelis Marinakis is so many things going on. He shouldn't be involved anyway. He doesn't have the time. You do you you put somebody in charge. They don't meet the goals that you set from the beginning of the season. Boom. 
we're not we're not going to talk again about how we have no patience for projects and whatever but i mean the, some of these statements today were just absurd absurd and and then throwing cordon under the bus i mean you know here we're hearing about how oh mighty nike has faith in cordon he's making him this global director if he's getting thrown under the bus by a guy who's clearly speaking and writing a prepared statement that that tells me otherwise dude cordon has no I, I don't believe that he's going to be a global director anymore i don't think that's the case but anyway make of that what you will the the statements are the statements it is what it is uh transfer mayhem is going on at olibiakos and we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of the post match but I gave you guys so far, you have four scouting reports already. Some of you have already been commenting about them and more stuff, more are coming more center backs. We're expecting center backs. We never got a six. We signed two eights with 10, like tendencies ish. No six. Looks like we have Carmo. Somebody was joking about Carmo not coming. So one of my, uh, one of my scouting reports that right now, patron, the Patreon community can see it's probably not going to be, uh, relevant, but, Gaston Hernandez, and it's anyway. Lot lot going on. They're going to keep me busy, but I'll get those scouting reports for you guys, whoever sign, and we'll continue to move forward with those. Uh, before we get to the nitty gritty of the post match, I'm going to see check out some of the comments here because comment section has already been popping up as it always does. Yorgos Muzanos, good evening, guys. Decent performance. Hope the team will only improve with the following signings. Honestly. I think I think it will. I think especially with a couple of them. We saw Gelson today. Guys, Gelson is this is what it's we haven't had a real winger in so long. We forgot what it looked like. That's what it looks like. Imagine when he's match fit. Imagine when he's match fit. Mike Scob, patron, thank you so much my friend for being a part of the Patreon community. Poor Adi, maybe Carmo is off. Yeah. Well, at least you guys got to enjoy the scouting report while it lasted. Aris Galamantis, who is Sotiri? Sorry, it was rushing right before the, the opener ended for the poll. Vote in the poll for who your man of the match was. We did it on socials already, and it's pretty clear that the fans believe it's Rodine so far. But, you know, vote in it. Sotiri is supposed to be Alex Adropoulos, who also I thought had a great game today. Lakis Gavalas, Cuyas is an embarrassment to the club and speaks to the ownership's vision. Lakis never never blunt or i should say never beats around the bush he's very blunt i like it i like it aris galamatis kuya should have left yesterday we don't need another alofuzos like brat we have suffered many already you guys you guys have points you guys have points there yorgos muzanos again pascalakis retzos alexadropoulos masuras fortunis all seem to be starters doi as well so lakis and the majority of them will not be here in the summer as things stand, except for Retzos. Retzos is the only one who has a contract. And Doi, and Doi as well, sorry. But Pascalakis, contract's up this summer. From what we've heard, there's been no movement on renewal. Him and Solakis. Solakis got a new agent. Doesn't look like they're renewing. I hope, I hope it something changes, but it, right now, the way it stands, it looks like we're losing both of them. Retzos, long he he they renewed him already signing or he they bought him out at the beginning of the summer so he's got a longer term deal he's not going anywhere Alexandropoulos loan we're not paying four million for him I think he needs to stay I think we can get him for two I don't think that that's a big ask I don't think Sporting would give us a problem but this kid plays with more passion than half the roster Masuras guys, we're, we've talked ad nauseum about Masuras. We know what he has. We know what he doesn't. That's it. Got to renew him. Fortunis, there's a lot of people that do want him, a lot of that don't want him. We'll get it. We, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but this is uh, the situation that we find ourselves in right now with the club. It, it you know, fortunately it is what it is, but the, if that's a Greek, that's a Greek core. And if we want to keep them, we have to renew them. So let's see what happens. And checking in from Glasgow. Sorry, Leon Philip. Welcome, my friend. I don't know if I've seen you around before. So welcome to the show. Thank you for thank you for joining. 
Aris Galamatis Marinakis must understand that he is just a rich kid that knows nothing and must leave to others to keep him wealthy. He can't. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to be honest with you. If he was, if the goal was to make money, and that's why he was owning Olympiacos, he's got things that will make money way faster. This is uh, football clubs, especially in Greece, are horrible investments. Depending depending on the situation. In this case, there's different reasons for owning Olympiacos. Some are political, some are otherwise. But it's um, yeah, it's the, the he's lost money three years in a row. Eight figures. There's no, um, yeah, it's not about money for him. Um, it's, yeah, not happening. Um, Yorgos again, Murzanos, Adi, five for Podence, four for Sotiri, four and a half for Horta. Will we be able to pay everything providing Horta works out? I'm going to be honest. Like I said, guys, so uh, Sotiri's Alexa Dropoulos, we are not paying four million for. We will probably negotiate. I could see us getting him for two. I don't think that's unreasonable. Podence, I I see us buying him, but it's not to keep him. He will get sold if we do buy him. There's no way he stays here beyond a year. No way. I mean, and the way he's playing right now, I doubt we'd get an offer, but that's not happening. There's We're not buying out Daniel Podence's contract unless there is an offer for him. I'm telling you that right now. Now, Horta, different story. If he, if he does what I think he can do and you watch the scouting report, 100%. That's a player that we buy, and you don't even negotiate. You do it. If he if if he turns out like I think he will. So, uh, and I think that's a pretty good probability. Uh, I made a very bold claim. Um, I made a very bold claim in the scouting report regarding Andre Porta, and I don't do those very often. Not since in Bam Huang, not since Rodine, but I, I'm really excited about that guy. So, anyway, but that's uh, that's how I see that. Uh, we have uh, Lakis Gavalas. Why would a player like Horta, let alone Carmo or Al Musrati, want to play for Olympiacos? Even if they think Carvajal is the best coach ever, don't they know he could be fired on a whim? They do, Laki, but you have to remember, there's other things that are offered to these players. Marinaki owns three clubs. Well, as of June, he'll own three clubs. <laughs> When there's no Champions League to offer somebody or the, no promise of Champions League, what is the other thing he can offer them? He can offer them a chance at Premier League. Whether or not it actually works out, it wouldn't be the first or the last time that a player was promised something and he doesn't get it. But that's that's how um, it's that's how it is. So, um, that and 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 the and right now we can't. We can't guarantee anybody Champions League. We can barely guarantee Europa League. And we're sure, certainly not guaranteeing Champions League to anybody because we're not winning the league this year, or at least I, I don't see it that way. There, There's better teams in Greece right now than us, or at least more consistent. Balk for sure. Balk is... Uh, I don't think... I, I don't see who's going to beat them. They they look unstoppable. I had thought when they lost against Adis, they would they, you know that would sputter them a little bit because because of, of the young guys. They have so many young guys on the team, but no way. They they look too strong. Even though I think Adis or sorry, Ike I think Ike is a better offensive team. They just can't finish. But Balk is as far as teams goes. Like which team right now is the most balanced and perfect? It's it's Balk, and they're a surprise. It's a surprise to everybody. Um, Aris Galamantis, your report ended up with Horta being a little better than Madi, or am I wrong? No, Chiquinho was a little better than Madi. Horta is distribution wise on another planet, and that's saying something because Madi's really good, even on an off day. So, anyway, and it's uh, it, it, Horta in particular that's that's the signing so far for the winter for me. That's the guy, that's the guy that I think will give us the goods. Anyway, we'll we'll get back to the comments in a little bit. Let's go, let's talk about the match a little bit. So, um, we were a little surprised at the lineup that came out. Right, the starting eleven came out. There was no Fortuny, no Podence, no Madi, three of arguably your best or most talented players, which surprised a lot of us. And I know there were a lot of people like, "Oh my goodness, what are we going to see here? What the you know without Fortuny, without Podence, as flawed as they are, especially defensively." What are we going to expect? Like, what what can we do? 
what are we going to be able to do when we've looked so garbage in so many of these derbies and we had one win so far in the new year. Carvajal just looks clueless. He can't make changes. What are we going to see? So it's, it was interesting to me that we came out and we did as well as we did, but we also have to remember here, you know, in that first half, first of all, we were running all over the place. Kids like Alexa Dropoulos, Rodine, they were all up and down all over the place. Even, I will even say even Carvalho, I was impressed. He was linking up and distributing the ball very well. As much as we like to trash him, um, the last like week and a half, couple weeks, Carvalho is 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 doing is is doing pretty well. So, you know, and if you're playing, if he's somebody's playing well and they're in form, you keep playing him. You ride the hot hand. That's a saying that we have here in the United States when it comes to American football. You ride the hot hand. So it worked out. Now, one thing that helped us. Adis looked dead. I mean, for 80 minutes, it was 75 minutes. They they didn't look like a team that was that can that was ready to play. They looked like they were still recovering from the Kipelo game that they had, which was tough. I mean, they played just like us. They went into to penalties too. And they don't have as much depth as we do to to, to change the roster, but it's it was it was one of those things where like I'm happy and I and and we did we played well we had more of the opportunities I think we should have scored more goals 100 percent we should have scored at least one more but you know it is what it is you know we're not the best finishing right now either but I, I will take the fa the fact that we won and we looked good but I'm not it's not lost on me that Adis were terrible and they they were just clearly clearly not fully recovered from the keeper i mean i think i there's just no way you can convince me of that they looked awful especially the first 30 minutes i'm i'm willing to bet you guys that the ppda their passes allowed per defensive action was like 20 or 25 they were hardly pressing so we'll see we'll see how it goes but I'm, at the very least this was a great confidence boost for us and I hope that this carries forward. We have, uh, I believe it's Bas Yanina next on the schedule. And then after Yanina, it is Panathinaikos. So with the with the Greek Cup done, or our, you know, we're out of the Greek Cup now. We we don't have a match this week. There's no midweek game. And I and it's Sunday, which would be uh, you know, the game against Bas Yanina. Another game that we should win. Bas Yanina is not really doing well. They're 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 with Kifisia right now in terms of relegation candidates sitting there second bottom on the table. So we should be able to do something there. And if we don't, if we don't get a convincing victory there, that spells trouble for something else. But we take the win today in stride and we use it to build. We've got a week to recover, week to work on things. We have some new new guys that are in here. Gelson Martins, it's another week that he can you know, hopefully start again. He can continue to build. Hopefully Horta and Chiquinho come in and, and they have some match fitness, or at the very least Horta does. And, you know, we have something because Carvajal, with, without the changes, there, there's not much. We we know there's not much he can do with the, with the current talent. There's been rumors about Madi leaving. We talked about the story that came out, the interview that he, that Madi then later quashed. There's been, all sorts of talk with Pep Biel, you know, in, in Greek media, there was talk about, or not Greek media, sorry, in Portuguese media, there was talk that he had a, uh, a disagreement with, with Carvajal that turned out to not be the case. And then, and then in, in Greek news, there was talk about Russian interest, which Pep Biel later disclosed to us that, you know, that was nonsense or the term that he used was quote unquote, funny bullshit, which was, was, is what he told us. So, a lot of stuff going on. There's going to be lots of ins and outs. And as much as Carvajal frustrates all of us, you got to get the players that he wants in first. We It's very clear that he can't do better than Diego Martinez, at least with what's already here. So we have to evaluate him. Once he gets the guys he wants, once they come in, then we, have, then we can evaluate more and see what he can do, especially in real competition that can play. And that's going to play at least more than what we saw from the, the, the near dead bodies that Adis were today, but that's a different story. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about our, about our tactics here. And 
there's a question here that I'm going to use as the segue into that from Aris Galamatis. Where is the defensive strengthening? First of all, tactically, have four defenders on the same line for once this season, as well as someone in the midfield to help them. So Aris, actually, the it's funny you bring that up because I don't know how many of you guys actually noticed this, but um, we are we are seeing kind of something that uh, Pedro Martins did once in a while when he was here third end of third or actually no beginning of the third and then fourth season, he would do this as well, where we transition from this four, two, three, one or four, three, three with Alexa Dropoulos able to get forward. Um, and we go into a four, four, two Carvajal is a mid block. That is it. Every game it's been mid block, mid block, mid block. That's it. There's no intensity in the press. He does not care. At best, he will elevate the defensive line, the back four. He'll push them up, and that's it. Rodine has space to get forward. Ortega's given space to get forward when they have the ball. But you you saw today, like Kini. I mean, Kini's not going to do that. Kini's defensive fullback, so he he stays there. But when we would lose the ball or in transition, we would see. Adis get the ball. What shape were you guys seeing? 4-4-2. Now, when he first got here, especially when against Bachka Topola and even against Bad Icos, it would go into a back five. Podence would drop very deep in most of those cases. But this time we were 4-4-2. In the 4-4-2, you see Alexadropoulos running forward. The wingers drop to be more level with Santi Hez, Santiago Jesse and with Carvalho. Now, Santiago Jesse's role has been the same as it's been almost all year. He sits in front of the defensive line, or he's the one in the shift that will sit and cover from the defensive line, which is, is what he normally does. But the concern is this guy, Carvajal, was supposed to focus on our, our defensive issues, and it, it didn't look like it really did much. And, and to be fair... The link between the midfield and the defense is really where the problem becomes. You know, today I thought it wasn't so bad. I mean, Adi's until the very end, they I don't think they had a shot in the first half. If they did, it was it was one of those shots that maybe got blocked by a defender, but I don't remember anything. I don't even remember them getting anything on shot for like 80 minutes or on target at least. And and that means that the defense is doing a, a pretty good job of closing those things down. So now, the Kinion goal was a bit of a travesty. So, but that's a personal mistake. I don't think that's as much of a tactical mistake. But part of the reason we've been talking about the, the whole proposition of getting a number six in here is because that will bridge the link between the midfield and the defense. Defensively, we're talking about. And we've all talked about this. Santi, Santiago Heze is not a six, uh, a traditional six at least. And I know I brought this up when the player first came in that he's not physical. And, but the, what he does do is it, the, the guy is pretty tactically astute behind the ball. There's a reason he's leading our team in interceptions it, it, overall and per 90 minutes. It's Santiago Heze. He, he does know what he's doing. But if you're going to have your six, quote unquote, or your more defensive guy is sitting in front of the back line, be the defensive guy, you have to you have to balance that out with somebody that will be aggressive. And if Santi is going to occupy that role and not be an aggressive, like real six that we need, your eight has to do it. And in, in good days, when, when Madi was on his game, like, like you saw in, against West Ham, that could be Madi or it could be Alexandropoulos even. But Madi's 50% all year. And the guys that we bring in, we we also need we we also need them to be able to do that. And both of these eights that we brought in, Chiquinho and Horta, are pretty aggressive, at least to at, at least at least on the 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 ground dueling side of things, closing people down. And um, as long as the team is moving a lot, and you have people that are able to cover for each other, it's not a problem. 
Um, there's there's a point that can be made about about getting exposed when our fullbacks get forward. So there's a, a nice comment here from Yorgos uh, Muzanos. The goal we conceded comes from Rodine being too much forward after a set piece, and then Biancon left his position to cover him, and Kini scored. And th this is the ri this, this is the inherent risk when you have these, especially in modern football, when we use our fullbacks so much. And Carvajal uses his fullbacks. This is the inherent risk, which is why you have to make sure you have the proper cover for that. And there's an, another comment here that is very important, actually, for Lakis Gavalas just made. Remember how much people used to complain when Bukhalakis passed the ball mostly backwards. They should have broken their TVs watching Santiago Hezeden. And part of the reason for that was breaking up a play, restarting the ball. Uh, Bukhalakis actually was, you know, as much as people hated him for as slow as he was, he did a job defensively. He found a niche under Pedro Martins. He found a niche there. But it's one of those cases you don't know where you got to. You don't know what you have till it's gone. And Bukalakis wasn't super special uh, in that respect. He wasn't like a great playmaker, but he could distribute the ball, and he did a pretty good job of covering the defensive line, which is why every coach used him for that. Look, it is it is, it is, is what it is. Look, the, the thing about Heze is, look, he's young, man. He's young, and he's got so much to that he can build on and improve on. I mean, and he has capability. I mean, he had a, a lovely ball in the first half. Uh, one time, one time played the ball straight forward. I mean, it was lovely. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll see we'll see how that develops and how that goes forward. But I think I really, I think that in the long term, I think we're going to see a lot more out of Heze. But if these, if one of these two eights that we brought in can link well or complement Heze, I think, I think. Um, I think we'll be fine. In that case, we wouldn't need a traditional six because then the the eights that we have will have some, you know, they'll be they'll be able to take on both those roles, be a little bit more aggressive while still being decent in terms of the offensive end, and then Hazek can do what he does best. So in that respect, and that's what I'm hoping for because that's really the only option, especially if we're not going to sign a, a real six. We still do have problems on the defensive end. Retzos is... I, he's not. I don't like when people say Arezzo's just terrible. He's not. He's. He, we haven't had a center back ball distributor like him since Semedo. He's the closest thing we've had. But I really am not a fan of this, like the rough house or the 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 bad guy Arezzo's, as we joke about it in the Patreon chat. I'm not a fan of that. I don't know where that started. I don't know why. Stupid yellows from him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like that. I really don't like that at all. And somebody needs to get in his ear and say, but you need to knock that off. Because that's this Usain Uba characteristic that he's developing is, is not helpful. And it'll end up, it's going to end up leading to more mistakes that could end up costing us because of him. So I am really, really not a fan of that. But, but Retzos in, in on a whole, Retzos is fine for us this year. Like you guys realize, remember going into the season, like we talked about, like why why did we sign Retzos? He's just going to get hurt. No one expected a thing from him, and the guy has come up and been a pretty much a revelation for us. We expected nothing from him, and think about it: we didn't really sign any center back really worth a salt. Freire gone. Porozo, decent here, there, got hurt, now hasn't done anything. Uh, Indoy, not really a center back, more of a six. Biancone was injured for almost half a season. So if not for Rezzo stepping up, imagine the disaster we'd be in right now. I just would like to remind everybody about that. And it's a miracle he's been able to stay to stay healthy for as long as he has. Really, it, That's really cool to me. But Anyway, we'll get to the comments here uh, as we continue to talk about the the post match. Uh, Aris Galamatis, Jose and Alex. Uh, I think he means Alexandropoulos can be great if they have a six to let them play box to box. If we run a three man midfield, yeah, which we could, 
now that we have some more reinforcements, we could. We could. We'll see that. Um, I think this is a reply to Aris Galamatis. We were in the 90th minute. He should be close to the defense, but all in all, he was amazing once again, especially in the first half. I think he's referring to Santiago Heze, which I would agree. I thought he was great. I thought he was good today. I didn't have a problem. Um, more, Moreover, my, uh, Mike Scobb here. Uh, guys, Retos is fine, but you need to understand is his first year playing back-to-back -back matches. He's still learning, unfortunately. Yeah, that's Costa. Uh, Levo Yanni, uh, Costa with a C, as many of you know him, brought this up too when people were getting on the red. So it's like, this is his first time. Um, this is his first time playing like back to back to back matches in a season for how many years? He's been injured every season. But patience, I mean, there's. I, I hate I, I hate saying that because we say I feel like we say this with about a lot of things and then we're rewarded with our patience with more negativity and more nonsense. But patience, patience. I'm sorry, I hate saying that, but it's it's true. Uh, Mike Scott actually has an interesting comment. I haven't really talked a lot about Navarro yet, but he says Navarro at least had some influence in the game and scored. If by some miracle the team clicks with all the new transfers and runs a streak of 15 games with wins, maybe we have a chance for the league. Navarro, there's so many misconceptions about Navarro. And if you haven't watched a scouting report, guys, I really, 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 for Navarro, wish you would. Because there's very specific context for his success. and. Navarro is the way I described him is he's a poacher. I mean, this is he, he this is a, a a poacher. He's not heavily involved in buildup. And you've seen that. We've already seen people complain, like, where is Navarro? What's he doing? He makes great runs and he's very helpful in the press. Th that's the that's the profile he is. He's a hard worker. He makes great runs for you. And he's a, he is an animal in the box. He's not a big guy. But he finds himself on the ball more often than not. So there's he he got a goal today. He also drew the penalty too. So two goal contributions from him, uh, which is nice to have to kind of keep people off of his back at least. But guys, I, I want I want you to know that he's been here. He's only played four Super League matches plus the keep it low matches, but he's played four matches in the Super League, two goals and an assist. I mean, the guy has not played in in the Super League for, what, 300 minutes? 300 minutes in the Super League, and he's got three goal contributions. That's pretty good. He's, that's pretty good. And he is exactly the type of striker that fits the system that Carvajal wants. I told you, Carvajal, this is different than Martinez. There's, it's stagnant. The movement is, you know, you're going to see those overloads. We saw some today. Like Pedro Martins, where you have like three or four guys sitting in a line, or five guys sometimes sitting in a line, and it's about waiting for the space to present itself, ex exposing the space. In many cases, you you stretch the width and play a lot of volume crosses, whatever it is, into the penalty area. If you're going to do that, you need a guy that's going to be in the box, that's able to that that's able to get into positions to to score and and get and and get some of these opportunities, and that's what Navarro is. So the context for him being here makes sense. And you saw it today. Drew a penalty, got a goal. Scrappy goal, but got a goal. That's what he's there for. He's one of those cases, just like uh, a couple of players we've had in the past, where if he, or even the way sometimes people in, um, the way sometimes people look at uh, Masuras, if he doesn't score, what use is he to you? Off the ball work rate, which a lot of people don't, don't check and a lot of runs, a lot of runs. And then when he scores, you're happy with him. Then he stops scoring for a game or two. You're unhappy with him. This is Navarro. That's how he is. But all in all, again, glad to, glad to see, glad to see him um, doing well. Glad to see him actually uh, getting those today because Otherwise, this was this was a sign. I even think media was getting upset with him in Greek media. I can't, I, I can't anymore with them. Uh, I, I've been I've had it up to here with with Greek media. It's there. I mean, I have to read it so that I know what they're talking about. 
but but it's uh, it starts my day sometimes with with the biggest migraine right here it's like right here this is my this is the greek media it's the same pain sometimes that my kids give me i call it the greek media migraine so anyway i think we have a uh, a bonathan icos fan here hassan rana bonathan icos will win the league easy I would, you know what? I thought they had a chance with Jovanovic, but man, Tareem, <laughs> this guy, this guy, if anybody can ruin Bonathan Akos' chances, it's this guy. They went from having one of the most efficient attacks in the league to just possessing the ball and creating almost nothing. I love it. 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 I'm here for it. Love this guy. This guy, Tareem. Can't wait to see what he brings us. But right now, it's this guy's bizarre. But uh, to his credit, to his credit, at least, he, you know, doesn't want excuses. I and mean, I'll give that to him, but very interesting addition to the league, this guy, about to Turin. Yorgos Halkias, we keep talking about Doi being a six, which is true, but if we are being realistic, do we see him playing as a six for Libyakos anytime soon or at all for that matter? If we're talking about what the club will actually do and, and what our staff will actually do, then then no, it's never, it's not happening. If we're looking at like the reality of the situation based on the people that have control over those decisions, no. No. But if we're talking about what his his profile is and we're talking about like what we see with him and what we're missing, if I if I were a coach, if I were the coach of Olympiacos and, and I knew that I needed a six and nothing's working with me right now, I'm giving that a shot. Can it be worse than some of the stuff we've seen? No. But, 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 there's a big but. And the big but is we have no depth as center back. How can you risk a guy that's playing center back for you when all it takes is for one guy to be hurt and then all of a sudden you're screwed? So, uh, that could that that most likely is the reason is because of the lack of depth we have at center back right now. Signings come in and we'll see what happens. But um, Aris Galamatis, Ari, I feel you. I left Greece back in 2003. The stupidity of the domestic Greek public opinion for us abroad is migraine inducing. Um, it's yeah, it's there. Even we. Here at Gate 7 International, I, I, I'm going to tell you guys. I won't give you specifics, but I'm going to tell you. They're not huge fans. Greek media is not huge fans of us. They're not huge fans because we, we don't operate the same way that they do in Greece. Greece, Greek media, the way, the way things operate in Greece, it's still it's the same as it was in the 90s. They, they believe Greece is the center of the whole world. They believe it's such a closed environment. And when you're trying to grow things outside of Greece, you sometimes can, what's the word I'm, I'm, I'm looking for? Sometimes you can um, not bump elbows, oh my God. Rub somebody the wrong way. That's what happens. But it is what it is. Greece will have to change eventually. And the way they do things in media and in sports will have to change eventually. Whatever. It is what it is. Um, you know what? This is one thing I didn't touch on about the press conference. You're right. Thank you, uh, oh, 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 for commenting. This Guya said we should. Apalagume of Martins is crime. Somebody should tell him he is nothing in front of Martins to speak like that publicly. Yeah. The, look, guys, I don't, um, I don't want you, I, I, I don't want you guys to look at that statement and, even even though it was definitely directed at like Cordon and definitely directed at certain individuals, it the the statement was clearly to kind of um, deflect pressure from them. That's what that whole statement was about. So I wouldn't I wouldn't read into that. I wouldn't read into that beyond that. Look, I mean. I, I I don't disagree with you. I think I think Pedro Martins does deserve. Uh, a little bit more respect, but at the same time, Pedro Martins did make mistakes. He did make mistakes, which is what led to his downfall. 
So, and it, it's what led to the decline of the team in his tenure because he had a complete shift in his operations and and how and how he did things. COVID changed Pedro Martins. Period. He became more. Uh, Costa likes to say pessimistic. I like to say more conservative. The, there are two ways of kind of saying the same thing, though, because Pedro Martins did. He became more pessimistic and conservative. He he didn't take as many risks. Like, look how we were playing before COVID. After COVID, all of a sudden, the, the way we played changed. Less offensive, more moderate. Thing, the, the way we played changed. He trusted more veterans instead of some of the younger players. That's just COVID changed Pedro Martin's philosophy. It changed how he, his outlook was. But we we've digressed on that a little bit long enough. The before we get into um, uh, some more regarding post match and kind of what I see is the impact of some things that are going to happen. Uh, I did want to ask you guys again, real quick, for those of you that are tuning in. Um, you know what? As late as it is, I'm I'm actually surprised that uh, you know well over a hundred people have tuned in already, uh, considering how late that we've been we've been going live. But I wanted to take a stop for for you guys that haven't that haven't had a chance to do so yet hit that like button subscribe if you like the content that we produce for you uh, it does every engagement you give us whether it's a like whether it's a comment you name it all of these things help us to continue to grow the community so thank you guys and and please just really quick takes 2 seconds costs you nothing just hit that like button help us continue to, to grow. If you're listening to this, because this is a live show, but we do put this on podcast audio. If you're going to be on podcast audio, listening to this after the fact, give us a five-star review as well. And, and even write something because everything, all of that helps us. It, it moves us up into the rankings and helps the algorithm push us for other people. And while we're at it uh, again, I'll bring up Patreon. You can join the Patreon community for only a dollar a month. I do want to thank our newest patrons since we last did a patron shout out. Uh, Pango G7, thank you so much. Uh, Yerasimos, uh, who's uh, been uh, a very recent as well, a couple days ago, and he's been fiery ever since he joined. And then today, earlier today, Yanis Calamaras, thank you guys so much for joining the Patreon community. I mean, Patreon has just taken off. It was uh, very, very fast to start. A lot of people came in. Then we had a couple weeks of, you know, a little bit more slower growth. But now it's taken off again. People are joining the community. The chat is popping 24-7. I love it. I love the so many different opinions. A um, lot of stuff that we go into. A lot of fun things. So check us out on Patreon. It's, it's a good time. I promise you won't be disappointed. The WhatsApp group is worth it above all else. Now, bringing things back to the to the post match here. So, if we didn't win this match today, if Carvajal lost points when everybody else won, he would have been gone. He would have been canned. I'm sure of it. Not that I would have done it, but I, I'm pretty sure he would have been gone. If we fell further, you know, we're minus six right now from the top. If we fell further, minus nine, I'm I'm sure he would have been gone today. So he got the win, gets another win at uh, against Yanina uh, next week. This is huge for us. This is huge. So new signings are coming in. Maybe because the signings are coming in, and, and these are guys. Some of these guys he trusts. Remember, Andre Horta was there when Garvajal was at Braga. He relied on him. He used him. He knows what he brings. That's why he wants him so bad. So this is this is this is the this is the time he is going to have to prove something so that he doesn't join the carousel out the door. Now, even if he's able to do it, even if he's able to do something, I, I just can't see with the way ha that he's managed things. I don't see us getting anything out of the playoffs. I just can't see it happening. I don't see how he's still the coach at the end of the season. I could be wrong. I could be. I'm ready to admit that. But I don't see Carvajal being the coach that takes us into the 100th anniversary of this club, by the way. Next season, 100th anniversary season. So Carvajal, a coach that, that's really going to bring in the 100 years. Sorry, I don't see it. Anyway. It's, I don't, um, I don't, I don't see it at all. I don't see it. 
uh, Aris Galamatis, please all think of Cuyas as the fool that throws shit on the fan. Adi is absolutely correct. Think of how many kids in the team couldn't run 50 meters after the first lockdown. Yeah. Let's... It is one of those things. I mean, Cuyas is, he's a character. He's a character. But he's here with, he, he's here for a reason. And it's, it, the reason he's here, he has a set of talents that are undeniably good. And that's why he's here. The rest is, it is what it is. Yoros Muzanas, we should be looking at second place for UEL if Balk wins the cup and league as well, because Balk, I think, are unwatchable. Uh, or unmatchable. Unmatchable, sorry. Um, there is no UEL for next season. It's We only have four spots, because last season, remember, everybody did poorly. Nobody made it past, I don't think, I think we were the only team that made it to uh, the group stage. And we were awful. So our, our UEFA coefficient sucked, which carried forward not to this year, to the following year. So we only have four Champions League, or sorry, four European spots. One Champions League, which I think is second round qualification, and then three Conference League spots. That's all we get next year. Now, the following season, and this is with, uh, well, they canned the new format. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But the, the, um, uh, I will double check that though, because I was pretty sure that next year we only had four spots, but they might've changed that with the new format. I'll double check. But the following season we'll have five spots because of right now, how well at least us and, and, and Bach are doing and the fact that we made it to the next level box done really well. Um, they've gotten every team got like at least one win. And then Bach got a lot in conference league. And then hopefully if Olympiacos and Bach can go decently well, in the conference league, at least up to the quarterfinals, it should be. Um, it should be good for us, at least. Anyway, I will double check that for you guys, but I am pretty sure that we do not have an inroad into Europa League next year. But I will double check that with the format change. Lucky's Gavalas. I wouldn't hire Carvajal either, but his CV is a bit better than the status of the club, which is dropping lower by the minute. We feel lucky to have him. Uh, lucky, I can't. You know what the sad thing is? I can't even I can't even really disagree with that. Which is a sad thing. Just the state of affairs at Libyacos. Yeah. Anyway. I do believe things will get better. But it can always get worse. That's been that's been the model of the last 18 months. It can always get worse. But I think, honestly, I think it will get better. I think it will get better. Uh, I like what I see with some of the players that are coming in. We just need to make it to the summer. Adis can't win the cup. And if they do, we're going to have to come in third place. But we'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe Carvajal turns it around. I know it's really, I know it's really weird that I'm, I'm, asking for patience again i know that's really weird that we're sitting here and we're hoping and every time we do hope we get disappointed but i it will turn around it will turn around i am confident of that at some point well almost an hour in guys uh rolling solo here it does get exhausting doing this thing solo but time for man of the match coaches grade we got the poll up right now, so I'll tell you guys what the audience vote is so far. And so far, the audience vote has uh, pretty much followed what it has on social media. Um, the 51% of you have so far voted for Rodine, and 8% uh, for Fran Navarro, 18% for Gelson and Gelson Martins, and then 22% for Sotiris Alexandropoulos. The polls that we've done on both Instagram and Twitter so far, by far on Twitter, Rodine is the is is the is the favorite. Seventy three percent of the votes have gone to Rodine there, and then looking on Instagram right now, uh, pull up the poll here. Uh, same thing, seventy four percent. So it's very clear all of you uh, are fans of Rodine. All of you believe that Rodine is the MVP, and. It, there are cases where I completely disagree with the fans, but I'm I'm in full agreement here. Rodine was something different sauce today. I mean, he was really the guy, and he has been for so much of the season, the guy that gets forward 
for us. The guy that does so much, taking people on him. He's one of the best dribblers in Greece. Last I checked yesterday, he had the the he was like top five for highest um, dribble win rate in in the Greek Super League, which is which is good. And and he's he's been great for us. He's been a source of offensive um, inspiration as well. I mean, he can he he literally like it's so hard for other teams just to get a hold of him. It's so hard for them to do anything uh, to contain him. Three, he has three goals and five assists also to this point in the league. So good on him. He's my man of the match as well. I'm in complete agreement with you guys. Uh, there's shouts, obviously, for Fran Navarro. Fran Navarro gets the goal, and um, he also drew the penalty that Rodinay ended up taking. So you can't discount that friend of Navarro. Obviously I think Rodinay, his Rodinay's impact on the game, just like if we're talking about open play, Rodinay had more impact on the game in play than Navarro did. Of course. Um, Alexa Dropoulos, I also believe is sure. No, no goal contribution to speak of, but he had a, some lovely balls today and he's just, that is the passion you want. Like th that is a kid that's fighting for, for the, for the, for this. He's fighting for the logo. He's fighting for the Jersey. I, I love it. I, I love seeing it. Is he the most gifted player I've seen? No, but he's, he's got enough to where I, I think, I think I want him as a part of this team. I think, uh, Gelson also, I talked about him a little bit earlier, but uh, Gelson Martins, you guys just got a glimpse of, of what he can do super fast. Fast, he's, I mean, he had also another one that had some lovely balls today, too. So he's, um, uh, I, I brought up in the in the scouting report around him, really the biggest risk for him was more of his health, um, Matt being match fit, but he's got talent. He does have a lot of talent. So really excited to see him. Um, I brought up Carvalho, Yoel Carvalho earlier, too, how I thought he had a good game, distributing very well. I mean, I mean, you know what? In a way, like, F him because, so he can be so useless at times in the season, so absent, but like the guy does have talent. You saw some of those one touch switches he made gorgeous, gorgeous, like touches and, and movements with his, with his teammates. Like I, 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 this was something that Nottingham forest fans talked to us about how like he was very talented, but very inconsistent. That's just what he is. It is what it is. It's, um, uh, it frustrates me to, to high heaven when you see players that have so much God-given talent with the ball at their feet, but yet they just they don't they don't work hard and they just don't do some of the things that would make them great. But anyway, it is what it is. He had a good game today. I'm not gonna go into it too much. But as far as coaches Greg goes, well, I didn't initially like the starting eleven. It did work, so I have to I I have to give um, Carlos Carvajal that. Regarding how the game progressed, I mean, Carlos Carvajal, it's like, I, I don't know who is a worse game manager, him or John Van Skip. I have no idea. I can't tell. I mean, he, he subbed off Alexandropoulos. And, and Alexandropoulos didn't look tired. And he was one of the reasons that the, the midfield was, was, was not being pushed through because he was pressing for everything. Um, he, he, he okay. I mean, bring it taking Martins off. I mean, but Podence looked horrible. He also looked really bad today. Doy, I wasn't up. I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy with the sub for Doy, but they did say that he was in a lot of pain. So I don't like subbing. I really don't like subbing. Um, um, center backs out, but you know, if somebody's hurt, it is what it is. But beyond Cohen, when beyond Cohen, we almost ate that opportunity. So I don't know. Um, but I've got then Fortunis came on for Navarro, some interesting changes. And then when we made those changes, we didn't really look like we were doing anything. I mean, after by the time the changes were done, I mean, they Adis was in the driver's seat, and it's really, it's, it's, it's really. <laughs> It really says something that like every time Carvajal starts to make changes, things usually end up getting worse for us. I don't know. Anyway, this isn't Carvajal's mess. He's here to try and clean something up. So let's see. Let's see how things go when. Um, let's see when things go when when he has his pieces. But I'm not impressed with Carvajal. 
you guys, I, I did the report on his analysis. You know what his analysis is. I go into it all the time. I'm not impressed. I, I, I'm not impressed with him as a coach. But let's see what happens when he has his players. Let's see if he's he's better at, at certain things. And I don't know. We'll find out. And let's see if this club is going to act on the promise to bring in a Greek core. We'll see what happens. A lot of good stuff coming up. Don't forget merch. Merch is coming, boys and girls. We do we do have uh, some fun stuff coming out. Like I'll bring that up again. So check out uh, socials because all that will get blasted as soon as the merch is available. I hope you like it. Uh, it did take a while to get this. Uh, we have a lot more stuff in the pipeline too. So if you don't see something you like in the initial offering for the merch store, there's more coming. So hopefully we have something you like. And, uh, you know, the support from the merch store is also going. There's a lot of stuff we want to do. A lot of stuff we have going on behind the scenes. And the the more that we can do, the more the more engagement that we get, whether it's, you know, Patreon or merch, this is helping build to what we want to do. We want to make this a better experience for you. We want to level up the content we provide. We have big plans for Greek football. We have big plans for Olympiacos Diaspora. We have big plans for the community of Red and White. And we want to deliver that to you. So thank you guys for listening. I'm Adi. This is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. We'll see you next time. Go!